my god, that that kiwi cocky tease at the end. Oh my god, dude. Of course, spelled D zero zero D. Kiwi cocky. I did not. I did not actually catch that the first time I saw that video clip. You know, Sean, this is actually I'm experiencing these all for the first time. So I'm having a blast. That white raw video. I actually just want to download it. And just watch it again. And just it's if there's amazing. some way to have a video be your desktop wallpaper, you'll just have it running with no audio in the background because it was subtitled. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I do have to mention that a lot of those players that were in that video, they do have their own live streams. So always go out and support oh, yeah. them. And uh, definitely live streams, I think, are very similar with the grassroots kind of theme that StarCraft yeah. has always had. Where players, you know, if they're good, they have a good personality, they can get a following all on their own. Yeah, if you actually go on over to TeamLiquid.net, look up at the top right, you'll see all the streams of all the pros. If there's any event and the streams going on there, will always be listed up on Team Liquid. And, you know, the one thing I really love about Team Root is that they're really good friends. Yeah. They, when, when they train, I, I mean, a lot of people, the most common... Uh, comment I've seen about their streams is the fact that it's fun. They're always on Skype together, practicing, training, chatting with each other when they're in-game, saying, hey, dude, my, my opponent's doing this. Do you think I should transition to Infestors? Do you think I should still just stick with Mutaling? And, and hearing that sort of interaction is just so... It's, it's so cool, because at the end of the day, you don't join a StarCraft team to make a lot of money. That's right. You do it for the love of the game. Unless you're Stefano, then he just crushes everyone, man. He's yeah. so good. Then, then Stefano's actually a walking money tree. That's true. <laughs> that is true. But uh, I, I have to vouch for, uh, for a Team Root as well. Cats I actually talk to. I, I wouldn't say daily. It's like weekly. We talk, we talk weekly. And, uh, of course, he's a great guy and a really good face for the team. So thanks, Cats, for your amazing video. Yeah, I mean, again, for any of you just tuning in, this is the Day 9 TV Team Liquid Heart of the Swarm Community Launch Party Segment 1, where it is 6.40-something in the morning here. I, I'm still thrown off by uh, Daylight Savings. When I was driving down oh, to the event... Oh, that's right, it was Daylight yeah, Savings. Yeah, so it's PDT, apparently, right now. But when I was driving down, the cell phone tends to be the accurate time, so that was right. My car clock was an hour behind, and my GPS was an hour ahead. So I don't actually know what time it is, but... Whatever. It, your, your GPS will help you find locations in Arizona. Yeah, yeah. So, uh... It's, it's a time zone joke, because Arizona doesn't change their time. Oh, so, I didn't even know that. You were so smart. I, I, yeah, there's like five people who work at, you know, timezoneconverter.com. <laughs> we're like, yeah, it was awesome. I hate it when my GPS does that. Oh. And, of course, I, I wanted to note that we're actually here on the Blizzard campus right now. Yep. So I want to give a huge thanks to the wonderful folks at Blizzard Entertainment, not just for giving us this space to be able to put on the event, but of course for making StarCraft. Which That's a quite, good start. That's was a quite really good generous start. of them. Yeah. No, even even when I was uh I can't remember when I played the first game. It's like eight eight or nine is when I played the first game. I was like, thanks Blizzard. That's even then you were like Thanks. It was like that clapping when Actually anyone... you know what I just remembered I lied to you. Earlier today, when you Did asked me, me, we were talking. I know it's okay. We'll we'll get through this. But you asked me what my first Blizzard game was, and yes. I said Warcraft 2. That is a lie. It was Rock and Roll Racing, and I didn't make the connection that that game was made by Blizzard until I was in my 20s, and I almost oh. crashed my car because the realization that they made my favorite Super Nintendo game, they also made my favorite RTS. I just had to get that off my chest because I lied to you, and you deserve better. Wow. Well, that's. I'm glad that we have this open relationship yeah. where we're able to share that sort of information with each other. Definitely, my first game was Warcraft 2, and in fact, there's this. Uh, there was the mission where Lothar dies. Spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Lothar dies. Um. Awkward. Some of you might know who. Lothar from Warcraft 2 is, but you should play it, because there's this... Um, for any of you who've played the StarCraft 2 single player, which should be all of you, um, there's those missions where it'll have a bunch of objectives, and one of them is, like, keep Jim Raynor alive. Right. Keep one of these hero units alive. And the Warcraft 2 missions also had that similar structure, and in that one, one of the goals was keep Lothar alive. And okay. when the game starts, Lothar's surrounded, and he gets killed. And it's supposed to be one of those like interesting intersections where they like lay down game-like rules and then do a little twist to surprise you. But but as a kid, I was just like, oh, well, he died, so I'm just gonna restart. <laughs> uh, this also happened to me at that one moment in Chrono Trigger. If you've ever played that game, where where you're the, the, you can't beat this boss, you're supposed to die, and I just kept resetting because I couldn't beat it. But anyways, like, I kept reloading Lothar, and I was like losing my mind. And then finally I was like, oh, and like threw my hands up in the air. And then the mission kept going, and then I thought it was bugged. And then the actual 
like text started. And that's to when come you type in continue. the cheat that makes you invulnerable, and then you like don't die, and then the game never ends. Oh, yeah, the, the next trigger doesn't start. The game's like, what do we do now? Since we're talking about Warcraft 2, the very first time I played Warcraft 2, I, I was really young. This game's really old, guys. It's been out for a minute. And uh, when the first time I played it, the very first mission, I didn't grasp the concept of reading mission objectives. So uh -huh. young me, for whatever reason, thought the mission objectives were to mine every tree and to mine all the gold, which takes like two hours. And then I was like, this game sucks. Like, it doesn't work. And it's like, obviously... I was a very special kid. <laughs> That's awesome! I had the idea of you just chopping away. Like <laughs> I gotta build another lumber mill. And of course, I'm terrible. So I only made like four peons, which took forever. Uh, whatever. Well, you know, I, I'm sharing way too many embarrassing stories. No, this is per this is exactly what the goal of the community launch event is, and I will have many more to try to one up you from many. Can we just watch someone that's talented, unlike me? You know what? One of my favorite parts about the grassroots community is not just their ability to make awesome content for the competitive community, but also the creativity. There is a lot of artists out there who have made some amazing fan art. Actually, Blizzard, like right up there in the cafeteria, there's this huge wall just dedicated to the art of the fan community. And one of my all-time favorite artists and one of my best friends, Zoe, has just done amazing, crazy, cool StarCraft II art. Uh, she made a broodlord kite. <laughs> Could act yeah, she, she built a kite that was a broodlord and it flew and then it tanked straight into the ground. <laughs> I, I was not expecting that. I thought you were going to be like, she drew a zergling. And I was like, no, okay, that's very nice. she made a broodlord kite. And in fact, this next video I think is a great showcase of her skill where she's going to make a drone of stone. So let's go ahead and hop and admire uh, Zoe's incredible art.